everyone! Welcome to my channel. I'm so excited about today's Cricut Maker project. I have been thinking about this and trying to figure out how to do it and I came up with these cute little personalized zipper pouches. These are pictures of my grandkids and I made this with the Cricut Maker. Now I tried it two different ways. This one I made with printable vinyl which I then covered with an iron-on um, vinyl protector so this is a little it's it's crunchier it's waterproof I don't like it nearly as well as I like this one made with printable fabric now getting um, Cricut printable fabric you might already have some in your stash but buying it in the stores it's kind of hard to find right now I'm not sure if it's still going to be available I know it's sold out on the website but I went to Joann's and I found this this is by crafters images and this is photo fabric. They had several different types. I got the one that said 100% crafters canvas. Uh, there are five sheets of eight and a half by 11 in here. And it took me one sheet to make a pouch. So this works with inkjet printers. So I printed this with my inkjet printer. And I'm going to show you how to add those pictures in design space and then cut your pieces out and then meet me right back here and we'll put this together. So here we are in Design Space. This is a pretty easy project and it has a really fun feature using the pattern fill. So let's get started. The first thing we need to do is grab a shape. So let's click on shapes and click on square. While the square is selected, we're going to unlock key proportions, which allows us to move the height and width independently of each other. You can either click here in the bottom left corner where you see this little lock or right up here in the edit bar at the top of the screen between the width and the height you see the little lock you can click on it there so let's unlock it just by clicking on it in either place and we're going to change that width to 6.5 and the height to 4.5 all right that's perfect next thing we want to do is grab another shape and we're going to grab another square and we're going to click on this square over here in the layers panel and just pick another color just so that you can see it. It doesn't matter what color. All right, now click back on that square, leaving the lock locked because we want to make a perfect one inch square. So we're going to resize this. You can either click on the height or the width, click on 1.0, and it will automatically change the height to 1.0 or the width, depending on which one you clicked. All right, now the thing we want to do is line this square up perfectly in this lower left corner. The easiest way to do this to make sure that we have it exactly is to select both. We're going to click align, align bottom, align, align left. And now we know that that is perfectly in that left corner. And while they're still both selected, we're going to right click and click slice. And now we have sliced this square out of that rectangle. And we can get rid of that one. Let's put our pink square or whatever color you made yours over on the other side. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to select everything. And we're going to go align. Only this time we're going to align bottom. Align right. And now we know that is perfectly in that lower right corner. So while it's all still selected, we're going to right click and click slice. And now we have sliced that corner out of the big rectangle. So we have a piece that looks something like this. All right. Now we're going to right click on it while it's selected and click duplicate. These are the two pieces we need for our bag. Now, how do we get our photos in here? This is my, one of my favorite features and I forget to use it often enough. But you can put a photo right into a shape. And it's super simple. All you need to do is click on Upload. And over here you see Pattern Fill. We're going to click on Upload Pattern. Now we can drag and drop a file here or we can browse. So I'm going to click Browse. And now you're going to navigate to where the photo is that you want to put on your project. I'm going to use this one of my grandson right here and to click Open. And here is the photo. It's going to look a little bit grainy, but that's okay. It's not going to load that way. You can name it here. You can click on some tag words so that it's easier to find 
when you're looking for the pattern. Um, I'm just gonna click on black and white. It's got Ace, I clicked on Photos. You can click as many or as few of these filters as you want. And then I'm gonna click Save. And it takes just a couple of seconds for this to save. Okay, it doesn't look like anything happened, but it did. But while we're still right here, let's go ahead and upload the second side of our pattern. So we're gonna click Upload Pattern again, Browse, navigate to where the second photo is that you want to use. I'm going to use this one right here. I'm gonna click Open, and we're going to repeat those steps. I can go ahead and choose photos. I can choose black and white. Um, I could name it whatever I wanted. Go ahead and click save. Okay, so like I said, it doesn't look like anything happened, but it did. So we're just going to click cancel. And now we're going to go over to one of our shapes. It doesn't matter which one. And you're going to click on it over here in the layers panel. Click right on the little icon of the shape. And we're gonna change that to print. When we do that, we see two menus pop up here. We have a color menu and a patterns menu. We wanna click on the patterns menu. And this is where you're going to see what we just did actually did something. Here are our two patterns. So I can click on either one. And you can see it just filled in my shape. How awesome is that? Now you see down here, it's my shape isn't quite as big or my pattern isn't quite as big as my shape, so it started to repeat it. So we can fix that. Let me click back on it. Get back to patterns, and down here at the bottom of the patterns menu is a feature called edit. And in edit, we can change the scale, we can change the direction horizontally or vertically, we can rotate it, we can flip it, mirror it, all I'm going to do is click on the scale up arrow and I wanna make that just a little bit bigger so that I can get rid of that little seam on the bottom. And that looks great. I'm not too worried about that. That's going to be under my sewing. So that looks perfect to me. So we'll just click on the X and now we're going to click on the second shape. Click on it in the layers panel, click on print click patterns and here is your second pattern. If for some reason you go back to this later and the last pattern that you loaded is going to be up here at the top, but say you wanna go back and refer to this later and you don't wanna to have to scroll through all these patterns, all you have to do is click on filters right here and then you can click on uploaded and that will show you just the patterns that you have uploaded or Remember when you checked black and white or whatever, you can click on that as well and keep filtering it down. But mine's right here, so I'm going to click on my second image. And you can see it has filled in my shape. And again, it's just a little bit short right here. I can go into the edit and blow that up a little bit. I'm not too worried about it because it's. I know that's where I'm going to be sewing, so it's not going to show, but if you're worried about it and you want to or you need to, you need to adjust it so that um, your image is more centered or however you like it, feel free to go ahead and edit that image any way you want. But basically this is all we need for the pouch, so we're going to click on make it. And you can see that it's making this a print and cut, which is exactly what we want. This outer black line is what the Cricut uses to identify where on the mat our objects are. So you're gonna see this black square around it. That's perfectly okay. It's supposed to print that way. So go ahead and print this out on your printable fabric using the inkjet printer. Make sure you put the pattern or the fabric paper in your printer. Um, in such a fashion that it's going to print on the fabric side. I have in my HP Envy, I have to put it face down, fabric side down in my tray, and then it will print on the right side. So however your printer works, make sure you put it in the right direction, go ahead and print it out, and then you're going to peel the backing off and put it on your mat. Okay, so it's reading the registration marks. It's going to check various spots around the edge of the frame. A 
And then once it reads those registration marks, it knows where the objects are on the paper, or in this case, the printable fabric. Okay, this is super simple. We've got our two pieces of fabric that we've cut out with the Cricut Maker, and don't worry if you have some strings hanging off. Don't pull them, cut them off if you do. Um, you don't want it to ravel more than necessary on the edges or fray. So I just trimmed those off, no big deal. So we've got our two pieces of printable fabric and we made this six and a half inches wide so we need at least a seven inch zipper. I think this is an eight, um, but it needs to be at least seven. I don't, they don't make a six and a half. So first thing you're going to do, let me pull my sewing machine over here. I've got my zipper foot on. And again, this isn't my regular machine, so let's hope this goes well. So the first thing we're going to do is take our first piece, and it doesn't matter which one's which, you're going to put that down on your table, face up, so you can see the picture. You're going to take your zipper with the zipper pull side down. You're going to line it up on your fabric just like that. So the zipper pull is facing me, the photo is facing out. All right. So the zipper is upside down on top of the photo. Now we're going to line that right up on that edge. You can use some wonder clips if you want. And you're just going to run a stitch right along that top edge. So let's do that real quick. I'm going to back stitch a little at the beginning. done with that. This is so easy you guys. So so easy. Alright, so it should look something like this right now. So what we're going to do is flip this up and you want to take your iron and press that seam down so that it is nice and flat. Alright, so I just pressed it and now I'm going to run a seam right or a stitch right along that edge so that it secures the zipper and the photo piece down flat. Okay? So your square pieces are on the bottom. Here we go again. Threads out of the way. And I'm kind of pulling the fabric away from the zipper as I run that stitch along the top. Okay, so now it looks like this. If you can see that, we ran a stitch right along the top. And you can cut off your threads as you go if you want, or cut them at the end. I like to do them as I go so I don't forget they don't get tangled up where I don't want them. All right, so now we're going to put this piece face up on our desktop. Did you see that? Okay. Now we're going to take the other piece and we're going to put it face down, line those edges up, and line it with the top of the zipper. So it looks like this. All right, so now we're going to sew the top of that zipper. And again, make sure your edges line up right here. We're going to sew the top of that zipper to the second side of our photo paper, or fabric photo paper. Here we go. Make sure everything stays nice and neat. So now we have this. So we're going to do the same thing to the second side. We're going to press that seam open right here. And then we're going to run a stitch along the side. So I press that nice and flat. And now I'm going to run a seam right along that edge.
So now we have a nice seam along the top of both. It's called a top stitch. Now what we're going to do is open it up and we're going to sew across that zipper right where the edge of the fabric is. So we're just going to sew back and forth and back and forth over this edge of the zipper. And then we're going to do the same thing on this side. Make sure that the pull is inside your fabric. So you want to make the pull open. And what we're doing is creating a new stop so that the zipper doesn't come off when we cut the ends of it. So let's go ahead and do that. And again, I'm just going where the fabric, the edges of the fabric are just inside that. And I'm just going back and forth over the edge of the zipper. Perfect. Those threads off. And I'm going to do the same thing on this end. I'm going to hold these kind of closed as if it were zipped, but make sure it's not zipped. You've got to have that zipper pull on the inside or between your two pieces of fabric. So here we go. And we're just doing this so that we don't accidentally pull that zipper right off when we trim it down. I'm going to do is go ahead and put my regular foot back on. Okay, so it should look something like this. You've now sewn a stitch right across the zipper there and or right across the zipper there. The tails are open, your zipper's open. All right, so go ahead and open that zipper up pretty much the rest of the way, minus maybe an inch or so. And now you can go ahead and trim that zipper off right at the edge of the fabric. So it looks like that. Just trim those edges off. Now I'm going to fold it so the right sides are together. I'm going to match up those corners just like so. And again, go ahead and pin it if you want. I'm not going to, just for the sake of time. We're going to sew from here. We're going to go just inside where we put that stop for the zipper. So you want to go closer to the to this side. Here's the seam. We're going to go just inside where we put that zipper stop. We're going to sew all the way down and off the side. And then we're going to sew all the way down and off the side. And then we're going to sew across the bottom. So, okay, so now we have a seam down this side. We're going to do the same thing on this side. We're going to go just inside where we stopped that zipper and sew straight down, just down and off the edge. Now we're going to sew this straight edge. Again, we're back stitching. Okay. So now if you have a, an excess amount of fabric here, which I kind of did a pretty wide seam allowance, I don't need all that. I'm going to trim it. If you don't, that's fine. Just make sure you don't cut off that zipper stop. All right, so now you can open it up. Not, Don't turn it wrong right side out yet. You can unzip it all the way if you want. You're going to do these box corners just like we did on that other bag. We're going to fold it like this. We're going to line up that top and bottom seam. And you can open up those seams if you want to make it look even nicer. And then you're going to sew right across that edge. So let me show you again. So it's like this. You're going to open it up, turn it sideways, and pinch it like this. And make sure that front and back seam are lined up like so. 
and then we're just going to stitch right across that end. Next stitch, go right off the edges. Okay, so corner one looks like this. And we're going to do the same thing over here. We're going to open it up. We're going to match up the back and the front. You can open up those seams or you can push one to one side and one to the other, whichever way you want to do it. And we're going to sew that edge. So now if you want to make sure that those edges don't fray, you can go ahead and run a zag, 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 a zigzag stitch right along that edge just to give it a little nicer finish. And that will keep it from fraying any further. Now you just want to trim up all of your threads. All right, and Turn it right side out and push those corners out. Make sure you get the corners at the top as well. And there you have it, a cute little personalized zipper pouch. Now I like to, this one's got a little bit of a square bottom. The one I made earlier today, I did not do that with, but I kind of like this it gives you a little more room and I like to add a little tassel or something to the edge so I have some little tassels I think these were target dollar spot at one point or it might have been Michaels I don't know but you can pick up tassels or make your own and then I just put the little tassel on the edge so I think these would be really fun stocking stuffers that uh, like I said the grandma's mom's sisters aunts and your family might enjoy. You can make this as big or as little as you want. I made it, this is just a little purse size, so you could put change in it or credit cards or the store cards. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. And until next time, see you soon. Bye-bye.